Fashion is something that I have a passion for. When people think of fashion, they think of fancy clothes and shows. What about what happens behind the scenes? I have started a new series called A Documentary that goes deeper into these topics. Okay, so I'm Hannah Snert, mainly focusing on fashion photography. Um, I have a 10,000 following on Instagram and that's what I've been working on mostly. So why did you start photography? Um, I always had an interest in film and then I kind of realized that photography was my true passion to be cliche um, so I kind of pursued that and then I realized that my favorite area of photography was fashion so I've just been pursuing that. So what equipment do you use? I like to use the Pentax medium format camera that you may be able to see in the distance. <laughs> um, it's a really good camera. Um, it's just really great for portrait photography and that's kind of what I like to focus on with fashion as well. Just kind of, I like close-ups of the face as well, which I feel is really important. So do you think anyone can be a good photographer? I think anyone can take an image, but I do think it takes something else to be a photographer. I think it's just, Every, like if you gave a thousand people a camera you'd get a thousand different images because everybody sees something different in a different perspective um, and I feel like certain perspectives have a bit more than others so I'd say it takes something else. Just from knowing Hannah for a little while I have learned that the little things make a huge difference in the outcome of an image. We live in an era of technological advancement a time when phone cameras can take a decent image. The ability of a beginner to take a good picture with an iPhone and an awful picture with a professional camera leads them to believe that professional cameras are outdated and overrated. Don't be fooled. The sky is the limit for someone that takes the time to learn how to use a professional camera properly. So, photography is something that has fascinated me over the years. I've been doing photography for about five years now. For five years, it sounds like a long time, but in photography years, it's not really that long. So I like to find out from different photographers like how they see things, how they take images. And something I find really funny about photography is a lot of people who maybe aren't really into photography say things like, anyone with a good camera can take a good picture. But I don't really think that's the case. It's more about how you see an image and also there are so many functions in the camera and people who actually learn the functions of the camera can use it better so this is why I've kind of like gone on a journey to find out more about different fashion photographers and how they take their photos. Travelling around London has its ups and downs. I've been to so many places in the last week, back and forth between different areas. Is it really worth it? Making a documentary is harder than I thought. Endless outreach with no replies can really wear you out, but when you're motivated to tell a story, you'll always find a way. With all the bad going on in the world today, discussions about photography can take our mind off all the bad stuff. So there's this modern dilemma of like everyone becoming a photographer mm -hmm. and I like to tell people that not everyone can be a good photographer so what do you think about that? I think that is true because people can't be a good photographer without a bit of knowledge 
like practical training but we've got to put time and effort into doing it just because you've got like a good camera doesn't mean you're naturally a good photographer there's lots lots to go on um takes years and years to work on and even when you're old and gray you probably still have something that you <laughs> to learn so how much training would you say someone needs before they're good enough a lifetime <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you, you need a good few years, like, and even then, even after a few years, you'll still, there's stuff that you'll still be learning and figuring out for yourself because everyone has a different style. Like, you'll, and, you know, those styles you'll get bored of and you'll change up, so you've got, again, more to learn there. So, you need a good, good few years to kind of know yourself a bit better, I think, and also to learn like the technical side. So what inspired you to become a photographer? I actually originally wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, I always really liked photography anyway, but um, I went to Central St. Martins, um, which turned out to really be not that great. Um, it made me realize that I didn't want to go to uni. Um, I went traveling, I shot loads of different things whilst I was out there, and I came back and was like, this, I'm gonna be a fashion photographer set up my business then. So what would you say your aesthetic is? Aesthetic? What would my like style? Um, I'd say I'm I like bold, bold shots. It's, I like to kind of keep it clean and simple but I always tend to somehow <laughs> get away from that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just love, I think for me, I love doing things that are fun so I try and bring that out in a shoot as much as possible obviously you've got to still adhere to the client's requirements so it doesn't always happen but um, yeah personally if I had it all my way I would have constant fun shots all the time I really get fascinated by what um, camera equipment people use like I've seen some photographers use some really complicated cameras, expensive cameras and not get the best shots and I've seen like very 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 experienced photographers use iPhones and cheap cameras and get really really amazing shots so I'm not sure if it comes down to the eye people have or people have just mastered the art of just using cameras in general so I feel like I'm going to learn a lot just exploring different photographers on this journey and throughout this documentary. But yeah, that's mainly the reason why I made this documentary, to be honest. I just want to learn more about photography and kind of display it in video form and show my journey in terms of videography. As a photographer of five years, I have a long way to go. I would consider myself a decent videographer and a terrible photographer. This isn't me having a negative mindset, more me realising how far I still need to go and how much I need to work on. Photography is an extremely difficult skill to master and I think the photography industry as a whole is overlooked and is not taken seriously. So going back to the whole um, thing about some photographers are better than others, like I've seen like Brooklyn Beckham has been into photography and he was allowed to do the Burberry show and as you can see this is just pure proof that some photographers are better than others because with the Burberry collection that he shot there was not really any creativity to it. When you look at his photography page everything's flat and you think about it he has the means to learn from the best photographers to get the best um, just learning in general to get the best just tutors in photography and yet his photography is still a bit suspect and still a bit amateurish. So that just proves that it's either you have the eye or you don't. It's not a matter of like, oh, I can just pick up any camera and so long as the camera's good, anyone can take a good photo. I've seen people who take terrible photos with iPhones and it's quite difficult to take a bad photo with an iPhone. So. Like there are no specific settings, you just take the photo and still some people just can't get their head around it. 
So yeah, that's like one of the main points I always talk about. I mean, like London is a really good place for photographers. Like I'm from London and this documentary is mainly based in London. And London's just a creative field. There's so many creative people. The areas you go to like Soho, Shoreditch, where the creativity is on another level. Like everyone there is just thinks kind of similar, similarly to me. So it's quite refreshing to see and that's one of the reasons why London was a really good location for this documentary.